Hey guys. Okay, so I'm back and I thought that, you know what, since I'm home alone for once, I do a tutorial on um, the hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. So this is what it looks like. So once the cast is done, you can see, once you sand it, you get this nice powdery color. So that's how you can tell that the plaster is really dry. I then seal it with a, like a pot sealer and it just protects it. So we're gonna, we're gonna paint it. What people don't realize is with, well, what I find is me personally, as you know, if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm a self-taught artist. So there could be other ways, but this is how I do it. I like to build up layers of paint. So the first thing that I do is I paint the whole thing black. So I go and I paint, paint it all black. And the reason why I do that is because we're going to build up the layers of paint. So then when you have like, you've got the eyes and then you have all the hands and it's probably hard to see it on the video, but you've got all the fingers and all the joints and the bones and stuff. I like to, these ones I'm going to try and paint realistically. So I like to get all that detail um, in the bones and stuff. And then once we paint over it in white, um, we let that dry um, for a couple of days. So these, these always take days in between. So it doesn't matter if it, if you've missed a few spots or it's chipped off or because you're going to layer them. So once it's painted black and it's dried, it looks something like this. And most people would think, Hey, that's fantastic. That looks cool. And as you can see the, how the, the white then on top of the black, it, it highlights, like I was saying before, highlights all the bones. Okay, and that's what we like. But for me, that's not enough. I like to then build up, build up these colors, make them a bit more solid and, and start working on and adding, adding more colors. So what I do, I do like this. So I've just been building up, building up and I do like a lot of dark grays. Um, and what I will do then is I'll get a, a brush Um, and I like to then just, I like to then just, once it's sort of semi-dry, I like to then just go and brush, like brush a bit more white over it and just start building it up so that, you know what, it, it looks like it's got that texture and 3D effect in the, in the skull. It's all, it's all just like a, a, a process and error. So then as you can see, it, that looks a bit more, you know, more detailed, a bit more realistic. I like to make sure that we keep as much black in the, around the fingers and stuff. So you can just sort of like dab it on a bit. Like I said, it needs to be a bit dry so that the, the, the white will just stick on the top. This one I just painted. So what we'll do is we'll go and build up another one while this one dries a bit and then we can brush the white over it. We need to just make sure that we highlight these black bits a bit more. So obviously it's going to be black in the temple parts of the skull. So, and obviously, you know, it's going to be black at the base of one to the other um, and around the hands. So I, I just like to sort of brush it on like that so that you know we're, we're defining each other okay and you know what sometimes you know it, it doesn't work and that's the point is or you know like it doesn't turn out how you want then you just paint it again you just keep layering it I like I said I I I just do what I think. I don't have no reference photo or anything like that. I just I just do what I think the, the skull should look like. If you get stuck and you're not sure, then you know what, by all means use reference photos or Google up a, a skull and, and see it. For me, a lot of a lot of my art is just doing whatever I, I, I feel. I'm actually having a bit of a a downer day. I um I've had a week and a half off for holidays. Um so I ended up taking an extra couple of days off. So I had this week off as well, plus the Easter break. And I ended up going and getting um, a small mole removed off my face. And so then I've actually, it's actually been quite painful and I haven't been able to paint. Today I'm just feeling down and out and yeah, having a bit of a depressive sort of day. So that will impact 
my art today um, and you know what that's okay I, I think I get more frustrated with myself because I had all this ambition of doing all this stuff and then you know I get disappointed mostly with myself so I'm trying to set up a small business and then I look around and I get overwhelmed because I feel like I haven't done enough I'm not selling enough I'm not posting enough but um, there's only so much you can do and I think that sometimes you just got to stop and you know what at the end of the day I enjoy what I'm doing I have a really supportive um, husband um, who you know uh, supports me and, and you know I buy all this stuff and spend my weekends and things out here so I'm just gonna leave that like that so once it dries we'll paint over it in the white so I think you can't be too hard on yourself and remember that you know as much as it's uh, I mean as much as I would love to be selling more and, and and making more money that I should just I'm just gonna enjoy it because the fact is this is this is my therapy. I don't want to go and hang out with friends and go shopping and, and um, it's not my scene. My anxiety gets too high. I don't like going into the shopping centers. And you know what? My friends don't, a lot of my friends don't seem to understand that, um, you know, and they, you know, you've pulled away from society. For me, when I work all week in such a busy, a busy um, workspace and it's very demanding mentally, I need this time out. I still have a family um, that I need to look after, teenage children. So, you know, this is my therapy. I, I'm now at the point where, you know, what if people can't understand that this is what I want to do? I don't want to go and sit at the beach and, and I can't. I can't just sit at the beach, to tell you the truth. To me, if I'm not doing something, I feel like I'm wasting time. It's almost like an obsessive thing and it's really really hard to explain that to people if i'm if i'm watching tv i've got to be drawing on my digital ipad i i cannot just go and sit at a picnic space and not be doing something in my mind it's doing a hundred things about stuff i need to do um and you know what i i i, I know i'm not the only person like that the only thing that seems to work for me or calm me is 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 the painting you know, I get a lot of um, people that don't support what I do, especially the some of the content that I do. Um, so I've always done paintings um, and I've done kids paintings. I do car paintings on my other art page, digital car drawings, illustrations. But the thing is that, you know what, I've always loved skulls. I'm not, I'm not like um, into the gothic demonic corner kind of skulls. I think skulls can be pretty. I, I just enjoy painting them. I like making them look realistic. Um, but then, you know what? I just started making these statues um, probably about six months ago. So we're getting new molds all the time and I'm starting to build up my collection and list them on uh, my Etsy shop under my Awesomeness Designs um, name. But um, I'm enjoying the challenges that come. Sometimes you pour them the plaster and you know what? It depends on the weather. They end up getting like say a missing chunk and then it's a waste. Um, sometimes it takes weeks for them to dry. Some will crack, some I will finish and paint and they will drop. If you're, if you're, if you, I mean, the molds can be very expensive to buy. You can buy them anywhere. Um, they, they can be, I mean, I have bought so many molds and been so disappointed when they actually do come. They're a lot smaller um, than what you anticipate, especially from China. They also take like three months to come. I would rather support Australian businesses um, where it's local, other people like myself that may have outsourced the molds. Um, I would rather support and collaborate with, with, with local people. I would love, my ultimate goal would be, I would love, uh, well, my goal here now is, that I would love to just build up and sell online or on the weekends when I'm home um, that people to the public can come and buy these statues um, and ornaments. Um, I would, that's what my ultimate goal is. I would love to supply a small gift store or collaborate with someone who would um, 
sell my stuff I guess it's it is hard I don't know about everybody else but I just get so exhausted trying to put it all on the social media I'm 43 in May um, I'm not old by any means but I'm struggling to keep up with all of the new social media like I'm making sure that I try to if I post on Instagram that it links to Facebook and so on it's just a lot of social media uh, everyone you know, only likes it if they want you to um, advertise or pay for advertisement. I don't want fake people on my account. If people are going to follow me, I actually want people to follow me because they like what I'm doing. I want to inspire other people like myself, I guess, who think they're not good enough or they, you know, they have a hobby that they enjoy doing and they think that it's worth giving up not to, like just to keep going. Don't worry about what your family and friends say. Like if it's something that brings you encouragement or enjoyment, I have been told for years that I'm not good enough and that I don't sell anything. But you know what? I just don't care anymore. I'm doing this for me. And I'm hoping that even if it takes a couple of years that, you know what, it will, it will get there and it will take off. As you can see, like, it's not a mass production. You've seen that we started off, so this mold here took about 15 minutes to pour, took about three hours, four hours before it come out of the mold, took about a week to dry. Got sanded, it's been drying for a couple months. This one then got painted in full black. Um, and then that, that gets, because it's top and bottom, it gets painted half and half because you then you can't put it down, obviously, that like you can't half paint it. You gotta half paint it, sorry. Um, that takes days to dry. I'm at work again, so it could be weeks before I come back. I think it's been weeks. I think these ones have been waiting for months, to tell you the truth. Um, so we now have the, the two there. You can see that they're, they're both dark. That doesn't mean nothing. We're going to go back and hit that one with the white. This one we're going to check out and see if we're happy with it. We've also got some other ones here. These ones have been waiting for months. As you can tell from... The others I painted this black and then painted just the skull bits white and as you can tell I need to just build that up a bit so it's a bit more realistic not that sort of bright white. We have three here that we're going to try and do today. I might do those in a separate video. Um, we're going to pick some paint. These are serpents, two serpents and then these are my new ones that I, I absolutely love. They have an octopus on the head. I am so super excited to paint these ones today. Um, I've only poured two. These are the only two that I have poured at the moment. So I'm looking forward to doing those. I was um, was concentrating on Easter planners and, and, and things like that, but I needed to get back into some of the skulls today because that's just the vibe. So now this one here, you can see is a bit, like it's dried and we've got the dark and the light textures. And then if we just brush over it with our paint, it picks up the cracks and it sort of like picks up a bit of the underneath colors. And once we brush it across, it just, to me anyway, I just love the effect that it gets. It's gonna highlight some of the bones that we want. It's gonna make it a little bit more whiter because obviously skulls are more white and gray than gray. So it can't be fluorescent white, obviously, because the skulls, as they deteriorate and age, you know, they, they the, all these holes and um, patterns in the the, um, the plaster molds, it works really well for us because, you know, we're going to, by brushing on on the top now on the, the lighter colour over the darker colour, it's going to accent all of those. We've forgotten to paint these two bones. Um, so we'll paint them now. They're okay because um, they don't need too much detail. We can we can paint them white. Uh, this is sort of like an off-white, and then we can go in and hit them with a bit of a a grey if it needs it. All right, so we're just going to continue on like that, and then what will happen is we'll let this dry for about a day. Once I find that I'm I'm happy with the finished result, that's way too much white. I've just chucked on there. You can see that I just wrecked that. Um, once we're finished, what we'll do is we'll let it dry for a, a, a day and then we're going to hit it again with another spray of the pot sealer, which is clear um, and it dries clear. And then what we do is we hit it with um, a pot of um, clear, seal, clear lacquer or clear sealer. 
And these can stay out in the rain. I have had some of the turtle ones with um, citronella candles in them. These stay out in the rain and they don't lose their color. They don't lose their shape. They don't disintegrate. So you can put these in the garden. You can put them on your front steps or on your verandas or anything like that. Any of the things that we make. So that's why I put them with the pot sealer. If you're not going to put them outside and you're just painting it for a decoration in the house, you don't need to worry about putting pot sealer or anything on there. But it's a good idea to spray it with a can of like clear lacquer or something like that. It gives it a bit of a shine and it, it just protects it. Again, if, you, if you're if you just buying a mold of someone because you can just buy the molds already made, if you just wanna buy a mold and paint it, by all means, you don't need to you don't need to take that step because I am selling them that's just a little bit of an extra step that I take in case somebody um, wants to do that and I don't want someone to buy something and not have the option of putting it outside or um, like I said some of them can be used as succulents the plants and things like that or others can put candles in so that's just the option that I've I've given one of the final things I will do to this is I'll take a fine line Posca once it's dried and I might just accentuate a couple of lines um, around the face with the black Poscas and um, just to look like cracks in the skull and now what we're doing is we're just going with a bit of black and highlighting any of the places that we think need a bit more definition again we can wait until it's dry to do that but I like to do it when it's wet so we can blend the other like the other colors into it so it's just you know again it's just what you what you think you know you might think oh my god that's too dark or that's too great then you know what then just you know what put a bit more white in it um, you can rub in circular motions just with a little bit of paint on the brush and you know um, I mean, you don't, you don't even need fancy stuff, just cheap brushes, some paint. It's, 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 the, the, the secret to any of that, uh, any, any painting is you've got to layer it. So, um, you know, the paint might be transparent or look really crappy. You've got to let it dry, build up the colors. That's the, probably the most that I can explain to you or the, the biggest, um, I guess, advice I can give you is build up your colors. All right, so I'm quite happy with that. So there it is, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, we'll go and lacquer it and paint it. So there you go.